some interfaces reflect and or reflect light. And by doing that, light gets focused or defocused. And um, in the end, the resulting light patterns are is what's, what's called caust caustics in the end. Um, so just in case you don't know what it is, this is a video I've taken many years ago snorkeling. So the quality is not very great, but at least you can see what caustics look like in real time. And you might even see a little bit of volumetric caustics there in the, in the video. So these are the light patterns I was talking about, <laughs> okay? Just in case nobody had, you haven't seen them before. All right. Um, and in this talk, uh, the interface is mainly, is in the end water, is animated water. Um, but you can carry most of the algorithms over to other interfaces, but let's say glass or something like this. Um, that's definitely possible. And also multi-layer is doable with, uh, with things on. No big problem, I think. Okay, what is necessary to render realistic caustics? I mean, in the end, as I said before, right, if you have like light coming from the sun and it hits the water surface, then it changes directions, gets reflected or <clears throat> or along some direction. And in the end, you need to follow these, these reflected rays of light to really find out where the light ends up in the scene. Um, same is true for the reflected part of the light, right? It also just ends up somewhere hitting perhaps above water geometry. Well, just going off in the sky, then you don't really see it. Uh, right, so rasterization is really great, but it is typically only great at doing visibility from one point of view, right? So that's not what you need here, clearly, because you need to basically find out what, what can you see from an arbitrary point of view on the, on the water surface along some direction, right? And that's not what rasterization is good as at giving us. And this is why many advanced uh, caustics techniques actually use a form of ray tracing, and I really don't have time to go into any of these. So just, I mean, there's, there's some references in the, at the end of the deck, so when you download the deck, you can check these out. Okay, let's talk about what are the most commonly yeah, used caustics techniques in games. Um, the most common method really is, and also the oldest, is just projecting animated caustics texture, right? In the very old days, this was just sort of created offline, perhaps by arts so or looping, the looping uh, caustics texture animation. But today, it's probably created in real time from water sim by ray tracing a very simple scene. So again, it's your ray tracing here, right? So uh, let's say you have this water service and the light slides, rays are coming in. And then you just assume, okay, I'm, I'm ray tracing, seeing uh, the, the simplified scene is just a flat plane, essentially, right? You just trace your rays, and it's easy to compute ray intersection from the plane. That's, that's really a no, almost a no-brainer, right? And you can see like where light rays concentrate, this is obviously where the, where the bright spots in the caustics patterns appear. Okay, and, and some people even go as far as saying, okay, we're not doing a plane, we're doing the inside of a box or a bowl or whatever. I mean, you can, whatever is simple enough to be done in real time in a shader, right? And then what you then do is basically for each, let's say you have a very dense water mesh or, a, or, or even a, a texture that contains a, a dense water mesh, then you splat quads into that at the intersection, intersection points. And this is how you basically um, create your, your dynamic texture, and that works fairly well. The problem is, though, that basically you don't really get the real lighting along the reflect reflect directions, and you don't really get the shadows you could get from these reflected light rays. So um, in the sample here, um, I have to admit that I've chosen probably at least for the, so on the left hand side, you'll see what a projected texture would do. But I've been a bit of kind of unfair because I'm using like a shallow a light source that shines at the water at a very shallow angle. And I'm using this, that, that, that same viewpoint as my, as my projection plane. So we could probably do better. But in the end, this is just here to emphasize the differences. So let me show this to you. So on the left hand side is, is the projected texture. And on the right hand side, you see ray trace causing. So in this case, right, you can clearly see that there's a big difference in like what the refracted light direction adds in terms of lighting to the scene and what in this case the viewpoint from the light really adds in terms of visibility and also in terms of where the light goes. Um, and similarly, if you look at, let's say, this shadow of this person floating in the water, on the left hand side, you'll see that the, if you look at the silhouette of the shadow, you see that even if the texture animates, the silhouette will stay sort of crisp but the ray trace uh, silhouette um, that comes into view now is actually 
you know, changing its shape quite significantly because of the warped visibility along the rays. Right? So, so basically, the shadow looks a lot more realistic on the right-hand side. Okay, so because this is a common, obviously, shortfall, people have been obviously smart about this and they say, what can we do to make this more real? And there are algorithms that use splatting, not, let's say, on a, on a flat plane or a very simplified scene, but they try to splat properly onto the 3 scene. Uh, there's a caustics map paper. I'll reference that a bit later on and explain in more detail how that works. Um, and they use that. But in the end, all these mechanisms usually use just approximate intersections, which obviously don't give you the full the full and real result. 